everybody, it's your host, the Sports Moose, coming at you live right after game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Made it. We had a heck of a game. We'll talk about that in a little bit, of course. We're going to go ahead and do episode 24 of the podcast, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Let's record. Uh, we'll recap the Lightning game first. Then, of course, uh, we'll talk round two recap. We'll recap uh, all of round two for all the remaining teams. Of course, a little bit talking about Boston and the Lightning. Series that wasn't as close as we thought it would be. I thought that was going to be a slugfest. Ended up being, you know, basically an undercard. Uh, when you're talking about all the great series that occurred, I thought that was going to be the best series of the four. And it ended up being... Pretty quick series for the Lightning. Not that I'm complaining, of course. We're happy to get the rest, and I think I think that was evident today, right? I, I think initially I, I was worried, like, oh, here we go. Are we going to look rusty? Not at all. We look rested. And maybe it's the focus that the bubble gives you. Maybe it's the fact that the only thing you to do is practice and work out, play hacky sack and whatever they're, whatever else they're allowed to do. In the bubble. Part of that, though, was that travel time from Toronto to Edmonton. So I don't know if maybe that kind of got your, got the gears going, right? Like, oh, we're traveling to go play our next game. Maybe that helped save off a little bit of that rust or in game mode before because of the travel. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's what happened. But talk about that. Uh, of course, round two recap against the Bruins. I'll talk a little bit about Stars and Golden Knights. Kind of a surprising series for the Western Conference Final. Of course, we'll always do our tail of the tape review who we think is going to win, and we'll close it up with tail of the tape for the Islanders versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. And just saw action in Game 1. I think some of the calls that we made on tail of the tape came to fruition, so we'll, we'll leave that for the end of the show. So as we always do, we always do our Post game show first, post game show of Eastern Conference Finals game one, Lightning against Islanders. Get over to the topic. Talk. Post game reactions. Man. How are you feeling? I know Lightning Twitter's ablaze, and uh, you know, it's always good when you can start pulling off the funny memes. And uh, when the Islanders had another. You know, too many men on the ice there at the end of the third period. It was, that wasn't defining the train wreck that was occurring already. That was the train wreck moment there. I mean, nothing going right from the onset for the Islanders. But, you know, this game was a little bit closer than it looked. Uh, I think once the floodgates opened, the Islanders weren't interested. Or Lamoff wasn't interested uh, when he came in for Grice. And really... We'll look at the stats. Uh, it was really lightning literally breaking, almost literally breaking their back with a few power play goals because when you look at the stats, and actually I kind of felt it in the second period, it looked like we were hemmed in a little. Uh, you know, that three-goal three three, uh, three goal lead is like the... <laughs> that has now, instead of a two-goal lead, the three-goal lead now has become the most unsafe lead in hockey. So even being up by three, I was like, oh, man, I don't... I like this. York still had a little bit of momentum. Their tough guys are really getting up in our faces. This wasn't meant to be. Even from early opening first period goal, right? The, that up uh, winners first. That was absolute sick move. I, we're gonna have to update the intro video. Uh, we had Blake Coleman Superman goal. Might have to replace it with the Braden Point power move goal. Uh, absolutely uh come chat coming through very focused and hungry i mean it's that it is very evident that this team i think we're past the getting through the columbus you know, doldrums and nightmare of last year i mean this team is focused announcement of course no steven stamkos for the series so not even having to talk about that i think is going to be nice you know if stamkos won't be here for the series cooch is back a little bit of a question mark i think the I think Cooper making the call to play it safe. You know, you're up three games to one. Let's see how the team reacts to not having Cooper off. 
let's not risk injury. Ended up working out, of course, Bolts wrapping that one up in five. But that Braden Point goal was ridiculous. But didn't come without a little bit of heartburn, a little bit of blood pressure, blood boiling. Kind of a weird penalty, cheap call. I mean, I guess the refs have to put, uh, lay down the law immediately. Like, yes, we're going to call everything. I felt the the officiating was a little bit better than what we saw in Boston. I mean, the Boston was your your results will vary. I mean, it was very non consistent, not consistent at all. But felt this calling was at least consistent. They were calling it pretty close for both sides. Not perfectly officiated, but for the most part, uh, making some calls. Yes, the amount of penalties second, absolutely that. Especially the way we gave up a power play, our complimentary power play goal. I was like, oh no, wow. Well, one for one, over one on the PK already. You know, hopefully we, we don't continue our parade to the box and it continued. I mean, we were committing penalties, kind of trips here. Vanessey takes a trip uh, with stick out of position. Uh, I think ben Hedman took a trip, but it was just, or no, Sergey took a trip at some point. Come on, guys. Let's our sticks to where we can control them. Uh, the Everly goal really was like, oh man, gave up that power play goal. Thankfully, three and a half minutes later, Victor Hedman gets us on the board of the power play goal. Felt like in the driver's seat, but not really at that point. McDonough's goal to kind of halfway through that period, chasing Grice. Kind of agree. I, I, I think 10 minutes in, yeah, maybe you want to change that momentum. I think that move probably went back to game seven of Flyer series where uh, uh, Barry Trotz made a kind of a gutsy call to start Grice out of nowhere uh, with Barlamas' place seeming to trend down a little bit over the end of the series. And I, I guess just right in the hot hand, right? Uh, maybe hoping to infuse something in his team. Defensively, they little bit of a breakdown. I think the Lightning got fortunate. Interesting bounces going their way, but just execute so well. It's incredible. Yanni's goal, of course, of in and out of the net before you could even see it. Another goal for Braden Point on the power play. By then, game's out of reach. 6-1 after a cooch goal. I believe that goal gave him the record for most playoff goals as a bolt, uh, jumping St. Louis. I think St. Louis was a previous record holder with 33. So now Cooch, 34, and hopefully many more in this playoff series and beyond. That's a record Cooch might hold until maybe Braden Point gets up there. Who knows? Might get up there concurrently. This turned into a snowman real quick, 8-2. to two. Another goal in the power play, yeah. Power play goals, so good Good swap and trend there. I think our power play in the playoffs so far was 17%. And, of course, during the regular season, we're like in the mid-20s. So kind of a weird, I don't know if we just weren't getting it done on the power play. And maybe this is the game we needed, right? We got three, three out of five on the power play. So look at the stats before we hop over, talk about bigger picture stuff. Of course, uh, Grice getting pulled. Uh, three goals given up on nine shots. Things didn't get much better for Varlama. Five given up on 25. A little bit better, I guess, save percentage-wise. I think the announcers really pointed it out. Body language, not great for Varlama. And if I'm Barry Trotz, I don't know if I have the confidence to go with him in game two to bounce back. I, mean, I think you got to give Grice another shot. I think he made the, the call to pull him in and get Varley in there to maybe spark a team, but didn't spark him. Get Grice back in there, see see if he can pull it off in game number two. Kind of low number of shots. Total shots for Islanders, they're mid-20s, maybe 24. Uh, of course, we'll switch over to the big screener moment. I, I know a few of you guys have liked stats in the heat map. Total shots, yeah, 34 to 24 in favor of the Bolts. Uh, New York actually out hitting us. I did notice that. And in uh, face offs, 29 26 
in favor of the Islanders. 50% for the Islanders. Holtz, uh, when I was looking at playoff stats, A, for the on Santa Jeff, 47.7, so that's usually where they're at. Islanders actually were also under 50%, so someone's going to have to win more than 50%. No, it looks like the Islanders take it. Game. Bolt's actually officially three for six on the power play. They just have that two man advantage at the end of the game. And uh, Islanders one for five. 80% on the kill for the Bolts. I guess we'll take it. Block shot, uh, 12 for the Islanders. And rubber on the net in the general vicinity of the net for the Lightning. Yeah, absolute beast of a game. Got to be happy if that effort. Let's look at some of the momentum charts. Over here. Uh, clearly, the first period belongs to the Lightning. Again, this is looking at it at even strength. Look at it all. Kind of a bigger swing. Uh, it's a pretty good moment. And possession time. When you're on the power play. Again, Lightning owning period one. But period, uh, I'm telling you, I really thought New York held us for a few periods there. Had that the fourth goal happened here, really momentum still Islanders kept fighting and you could feel that, but really power play scoring here. That was a momentum swing and coming up our way after that. Really that fourth goal seemed to have been or fifth goal seemed to have been the backbreaker and the lightning getting that power play uh, towards the end of I think they had a small two really shifting stuff in our direction. Lots of G's here for the both side of the ice. Don't see eight G's too many. Of course, quite a few in the greasy, dirty areas. Points the nice tuck, of course, in uh, this area here. One uh, kind of uh, absolute destruction type. Uh, Islanders actually had a decent presence in front of the net here. Only getting two of, few of those shots actually coming in the what, the last minute or two. Bassey having to come up, come up big with some great close-in opportunities and rebound chances. So Bassey had to play a sharp game. I mean, it's tough sometimes having a little bit of a quiet, uh, quiet game, but he had to come up big. He had some high degree of difficulty saves as well. So you know, I don't want to can't forget that Bassey. I don't want to say kept us in this game because we probably could, could have given up a couple goals. Uh, just wanted to chill out for one game, but yeah. He had some momentum saving goals, momentum preserving goals, for, uh, goals saved. What a great game. Got to keep in mind, though, just one game. Just one game. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We're not. Just because we're world beaters for one game, this could easily change in game two. And uh, we'll be playing Wednesday night, I think, on NBCSN. I saw Friday's game is on USA. And I know it's 9-11. I don't know if they're expecting news coverage. 19th anniversary now. So maybe that's why it's not on NBC or NBCSN. See what might be going on Friday. I know it's... College football maybe is on NBCSN. I, I don't know. All this, everything kicking off this weekend, though. We're really excited for Bucks action, for NFL action in general. College football action getting off. Uh, Notre Dame and Duke, of course. Uh, of course, a few other. I know we have a couple ACC and SEC fans out there. Those seasons getting off and running this weekend. Exciting weekend. Been waiting for it for so long. Hopefully the COVID uh, shadows are beginning to... To regress and and hopefully it's just recovery from now on. All right, that's the lightning game in a nutshell. Lightning game in a nutshell. Audio breaking up. Yeah, I might have been uh, turning my head a little bit. I gotta talk in the direction. So lightning game in a nutshell. Hopefully we keep playing this well. Getting on to game number two. Well, let's talk about round two really quick, actually. We never got a chance to get the recap for Boston, but also talk about the other series. 
And really the surprise series for me, not necessarily the, res the result, but at least how long it went and, and how close Vancouver was to advancing to the conference final. For me, that was a big surprise going seven against the Vegas Golden Knights. I think really the only weakness the Knights have right now is the uncertainty in goal. You don't know if it's going to be Leonard. You don't know if it's going to be Flurry. I don't know if it's starting to become a distraction. Maybe it's DeBauer's master plan. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if maybe that's something he's doing to keep the other team off uh, uneven. I, I don't I don't know. I don't really understand. I've never been one to... to Never been one to support a two goalie system, so I don't, I don't know how they're making it work there. You know, Flurry, of course, starting game one last night and a close one nothing defeat to the Stars. Who, I think, another surprise series there. I thought oh, Colorado was going to wipe the floor of them. All of a sudden, Colorado gets some injury trouble. No Jack Johnson. No, uh, have Varlam off. Uh, Grubauer. Uh, another, uh, I guess, Washington uh, Washington alum. Uh, no Grubauer. Frank Kuz kind of craps the bed. And uh, the Michael Hutchinson ended up playing third string goalie for Colorado. Actually won a game or two. Pretty impressive showing. But Vancouver, real Vancouver was a surprise. But Dallas all of a sudden can score, which is really scary because they were among the worst scoring teams in the league. But they get their goaltending going. It looks like they finally settled on Kadobin because Ben Bishop returning from injury kind of gave him a couple question marks, but looks like either Ben Bishop's injured again because I don't think he was back stopping or he was backing up Kadobin in game one. So it's Kadobin, I think, the rest of the way. And I think the Dallas Stars could be dangerous. I think this is going to be a really, when you look at these teams, they're pretty even. And we'll break that down, of course, in our tale of the tapes. Vegas. Winning in seven was crazy because I think I, I thought it, I think we we knew it wasn't going to be Vancouver's year, but the fact that they went seven with you know a team that's going to compete for the cup, uh, you know hats off to v Vancouver. I think they're going to be an up and coming team in the coming years. And then Dallas taking down the Western favorite. I mean they were my call to get into the finals against the Lightning. Avalanche done second year. I think another second round exit for them. And I was looking at a list of teams that haven't made the conference finals, what their drought has been. Avalanche are getting up there in years, 11 or 12 years, the last time that Colorado has made the conference finals. So big surprise there. Of course, we called the Lightning Series. Lightning moving on in five. Didn't think it was going to be five, but that was a pretty quick series. There really wasn't much to say there, other than the little adversity of not having Cooch for game five. You know, a couple of close games, but this series felt different. If you think about the Boston series, you know, I felt like there was a little bit less bite in it. You know, maybe the storylines weren't there. Maybe Marchand wasn't licking people's faces and, you know, they obviously stopped scoring at some point and they became a one-line team. We talked about that in a few of our post-game shows and I think the last episode of the podcast. Became a one-line team. Char looked like a, a shell of himself. Didn't get a particularly great series from their second line. Corey Krug. Uh, I think Charlie McAvoy is going to be a stud in the years to come. And ultimately, they got crappy goaltending from uh, uh, from Jaroslav Halak. Man, so many goaltending names going. And of course, just the unfortunate choice that Tuka Rask had to make in favor of his family. And I, I think it just really threw him for a loop. and. I think that just the Lightning are playing so much better right now. They're on a different level. But the other series that I didn't get right, Philly, I called Philly in six or seven, but ended up being the Islanders in seven. And they've looked scary. They, they've they actually looked pretty good defensively. They were able to put Philadelphia in check, who was basically the hottest team getting into the tournament. They maintained their hot streak over the first two rounds. And the round robin, of course, winning the round robin, becoming the one seed. But either their <laughs> good fortune ran out, or I'm telling you that New York Islander defensive system. And you know, it's funny thinking about it. Game one, we just won eight to two. The 
the Islanders were a team I didn't really want to play. And I think they got their stinker out of the way. I think it's going to tighten up the rest of the series. But they look great against Philadelphia. That was a now that was another series that was basically what I expected from the Boston series. Just punch for punch, mano y mano. Went the distance for seven games, and it ended up being New York, New York Islanders coming out on top there. So your final four being set for round two. Vegas and Dallas taking the Western Conference Final and New York and the Lightning in the Eastern Conference Finals. Had some studs and duds. I know I promised you studs and duds for the uh, first game, or for, for uh, Boston series, of course. I hate digging into the well and picking the same guys, but they were absolute studs for round two. And that is, of course, point. Kucherov, Palat had an absolute monster series, and Vassy and Ned. I mean, I don't think he got the attention he deserved because Lightning were scoring, getting stuff done, and the other, basically the team in front of him getting the job done. Special mention for the defense as a whole, but really point stealing the show, Kucherov stealing the show, and Andre Palat stealing the show. Uh, he's had a quietly awesome playoff. And Bassey and Ned, of course. Uh, Rask attitude spread throughout the team. A lot of P Boston insiders think so. I mean, uh, I think a lot of Boston insiders thought he was checked out throughout the entire kind of playing round. They they spun it to mean, uh, you know, they went 0-3 in their round robin, and they were like, oh, those games don't count, and, you know, we're here to play the games that count. but. Yeah, really. I think he wasn't, he didn't want to play. I think, I don't know if his daughter, and I just don't know the details, if she's particularly at risk. And, you know, they're over in Finland, I think. So, yeah, I mean, I, I that might have been the case that maybe there was a little bit of answer going on there with not wanting to be there. So, my duds, and that's a picture of Luke Shen. He got the start today and actually looked decent. Uh, as they went with seven defensemen, but he had a couple plays that really, when you look at that series, there weren't very many moments where the result was going to be in doubt, but I think Luke Shen was kind of our weak, weakest link on the back line. Still not liking what I'm seeing from the Paquette, Johnson, and, and Kalorn line, though I think Kalorn uh, served his purpose and made some great moves. So he kind of moves off the schneid, but the rest of that line, when they're paired together, I just don't know what's going on. Paquette, I think, had a stronger series than uh, the first round. I think first round, he he was definitely a solid dud. He was kind of on the fence here. I, I just kind of put him there because I couldn't think of anyone else who really gave us a, gave us a tough time in that series. But Tyler Johnson, even, even in game one, I almost saw everyone else jumping in the action. Didn't hear his name at all. I'd be curious to see, and we can look at how many minutes he played, because I feel like I didn't see him out there, so I don't know if there's a little bit of injury or if he's losing favor with Cooper. Yeah, Johnson, actually, lowest ice time. Yeah, I knew I knew it, because lowest ice time for forwards at 11.59, and that's in, that includes like a decent amount of, of garbage time today, right? Uh, where... They were rotating people in. Maroon even with more time at 12.30. So that's that's really interesting. So I don't know if he's fighting his way, jumping down into the fourth line. Wow, that's bizarre. Pretty even spread on the time today. Actually, Goodrow leading the forwards on uh, with ice time at 18 minutes. So how did Johnson? A little bit of a, of a dud there, in my opinion. So we'll see how he keeps playing. A little bit of a dud here in game one. See what happens. All right. Tail of the Tay for Dallas and Vegas. Of course, Dallas nine and seven so far throughout the playoffs. Vegas eleven and four. And right now, I think you're looking. So we're deep enough in the playoffs that we have to look at playoff stats and, and give a little bit of kind of skew stuff as the way the playoffs are going, right? So Vegas right now, offensively, 
you're looking at in here, you know, Dallas and Vegas, about 3.1 goals a game, number of games that they've played. I think really where the big gap is, Dallas has given up about 3.3 versus Vegas is surprising 2.25 despite the goalie controversy that's been going on. Uh, I'm giving Vegas the offensive advantage. And really, that's when you look, again, regular season success. Dallas was, or Vegas was among the highest producers in goals and, and offensive offensive uh, scoring chances. When you're looking at the regular season, they outchanced Dallas by about 200 over the course of a season. And their conversion rate was a full percent higher as well. Even at high danger chances, you were looking at uh, an advantage of about 150 for the whole season. Uh, again, thinking about regular season stats there, which may or may not have anything to do with playing five months later. Defensively, I have them at a draw, and that's despite the goals against for Dallas right now being significantly higher, basically a full goal, but defensive-wise, the control of the scoring chances against and, and Vegas's power play, the penalty kills have been pretty even. And I feel now that Godobin and Nett are going to give it, give them a more calming presence. I think their defense is coming in. They're responding to the task. You saw it in game one against Vegas, a shutout for Kadobin. So got the defense even. I'm going to give the advantage in goaltending to Dallas. Reason why, again, despite the crazy goals against numbers, Kadobin has played solidly. He has been injured or when they haven't been second guessing him. Uh, I think there's just been Dallas has been part of some crazy shootout games. You know, you're just going to give up goals, but it, when you don't know when if flower is going to start, when you don't know if Leonard's going to start, I just think that's a distraction and whether DeBauer thinks that's an advantage or not to play this game of who the, who's going to start in goal. I just think, I, I don't know. I mean, Leonard's been trending down. So who starts in game two? I mean, Flower only gives up one goal in the first shot of the game and solid the rest of the way. I mean, you gotta gotta roll the dice with three again. So just for not having a goaltending controversy going in Dallas's favor, power play and penalty kill. Right now, Dallas has been absolutely lethal on the power play. Number one ranked, at least for the teams that have left, about twenty eight percent. I think what we have to consider is a slight overperformance of where they were throughout the regular season. Regular season, about a 21% uh, conversion rate on the power play. Vegas is really overperforming on the penalty kill here in the playoffs. Right now, 88%, which is phenomenal on the, pa on the penalty kill. But uh, regular season, 76%. So it's great that they're getting it done during the playoffs, but it's still, for me, a question mark especially with such a strong power play. And I think this is potential favor for Dallas. That's something that's in their favor. Coaching, I think you got to give it to DeBauer despite uh, Rick Bonus's intensive experience, just still not as a true head coach. He's been everyone's assistant. He's been in the interim role, not only in Dallas, but a few other places. Great respect for the guy, but DeBauer has been through the ringer at <laughs> St. San Jose almost got him to the cup. So, I mean, that's an accomplishment in itself. Uh, he's done his time in New Jersey. I mean, he, I think he's this team that he, hey, he, he looks calm in the press conferences. I, mean, I would have more faith in DeBauer right now versus an interim coach in Dallas. And overall, I think this is a toss up despite Vegas looking overly strong the first two rounds and the round robin. Dallas has come on strong. I like their game. They're getting physical. Jamie Benn's getting involved. Tyler Sagan's having fun. They're getting goaltending. That defense is looking better and better. My pick is Dallas here. I think I'm picking Dallas. It's a crazy pick. I think numbers-wise and, and feeling-wise, you go with Vegas. But I think we're going Dallas here. Dallas advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals. To the course, play the, already know the pick is the Bolts. So let's see how we get here. 
how we match against the Islanders. Islanders love a pretty impressive 11 and five so far in the playoffs. Lightning 10 and three, only three losses. Bold scores regular season 92 points to the Islanders 80. But does that really mean anything again five months later? I think offense clear and cut advantage of the Lightning. We saw that in game one uh, with an eight to two victory and out shooting the, the Islanders by 10. But again, as you're looking at the regular season, uh, 243 goals scored for Lightning versus the Islanders, 189. When you're looking at goals for in the playoffs, though, Islanders almost at four a game. Or a 3.5, basically, game. Or the Lightning are steady right there at three. Again, I, I, my, that's just the opponents that they've been playing, the style of play that they've been playing. I don't think. For a second, you can say that their offense is better than the Lightning. Yeah, same thing for goals against Islanders, actually less than the Lightning at 194 versus 231. I think part of that is that they had a nice series against the Panthers uh, to get things going. That Flyers series was pretty tight, too. Lots of unders there. That really helps when you get, you're only giving one, one, two, one, or zero goals a game. You're going to be under two goals a game in against. Again, goaltending, clear advantage to Vassy. Uh, again, no disrespect to Grice, longtime veteran. And Varlamov, another longtime veteran with you know, potential starter upside. But it's been Vassy. Vassy's been our boss all along and their guy. He's likely. Hellebuck probably wins the Vezina t- uh, this year, but Vassy's probably going to finish second. And Vassy could be a sleeper pick for uh, the Con Smythe this year. He's. He's had some strong games. He hasn't had to carry a team, so probably will. Why well, he won't win it, but he's going to be in the conversation. Of course, when you're looking at shots, lightning out shooting the opposition, thirty-five to thirty, or the Islanders thirty-five to thirty. Part of that average probably helped by an eighty-six, whatever it was, shot performance, eighty-eight shot performance against the Columbus Blue Jackets in Game One of Round One. Faceoffs we talked about uh, both teams under fifty percent. Going to be imperative that the Lightning control the face-off circle so they can maintain some possession. And when you're looking again, Corsi and Fenwick type of statistics, looking at five-on-five play, the Lightning, the Island, clear-cut advantage here. That's why you get offense and fit in their favor. Defense probably should have put a check mark on the Lightning, but again, uh, keeping that goals against average down is pretty impressive. It, they didn't look like it tonight. They play such a sound defensive system. Been hearing the chatter all along, all along these playoffs, that they're boring to play against. They look like the 96 New Jersey Devils. We didn't see it tonight. They got throttled, but I, I fully believe that they'll be back and they'll clamp it down. So I'm, I'm scoring them even here. Uh, probably leaning towards the Lightning again because of the offensive upside and what we've seen, the amazing play from Pogian. Uh, Shattenkirk getting in the action and can't can't speak highly enough about Victor Hedman. So power play and penalty kill is pretty even. Uh, both disappointing for both teams. Uh, even at seventeen percent for both, and even at about eighty-two percent on the penalty kill for both teams. So that's been pretty even, and we kind of saw that today in action in Game One. Coach, this is really I could have gotten even here because Barry Trotz is such a respected coach. Got the job done in Washington, has really turned nothing into something here in New York pretty quickly. So lots of respect for Barry, but I think Cooper, Cooper, I think, has been coaching really well, playing the media really well, I think making some pretty good decisions, finally moving to that 11-7, which I feel like the Lightning are playing so much better with that, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's we've, we're not trying to roll four lines where it's like, Someone's double shifting at some point, and maybe that's helping momentum. Not really sure, but love that decision. Not sure if I like the personnel. Uh, I'm one to think that Coburn should be playing over over Shen, but that's just a minor detail, and I leave it to the experts. And of course, overall, I think the Lightning are the better team, without question. So, of course, my pick is the Lightning to head into the Stanley Cup Final. To now take on my new pick, the Dallas Stars. This is the most 2020 thing to ever happen, of course. It's going to be the Lightning and Stars 
a year that we can't go to the Stanley Cup final. I'm about three hours away from Dallas. And of course, this is going to be the year that Lightning play the Stars finally in the, the final. And I can't go to any Stanley Cup final games here in Dallas. 2020 in a nutshell right there. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed episode 24 of the podcast. Thank you for sticking it out. Uh, should have our post game shows, of course, uh, following every lightning game. We'll do episode 25 of the podcast next week. We try to do once a week uh, that we release on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts as well, and iHeartRadio. Some people finding it on iHeartRadio. We'll have episode 24 up tomorrow if you like listening along on the radio. Let everyone know about the Thunderdome podcast, trying to grow our online presence and our podcast presence. We have quite a few downloads. Pretty excited. So word's getting out. Uh, appreciate the ratings and I appreciate the thumbs up and your interaction on chat when we do a live show. Been your host, the Sports Moose. Go Bolts. What a victory tonight. 8-2 to over the New York Islanders in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll see you on Wednesday for the post game show. We'll be live here on Facebook at the conclusion of the game. Take care. Go Bolts. Beat those Islanders. See you Wednesday. Bye.